the test of our real sincerity in Krishna consciousness is how we endeavor with determination, even in the face of great difficulty, even in the face of opposition, fear, or failure. How we're willing to go on with our devotional service, whether we're popular and people encourage us, or will everyone turns against us, blames us, and accuses us. The standard of real devotional service is none of these things really make any difference. They may hurt our heart, but they do not impede our determination to carry out the will of the Lord. And before we attain the threshold of unalloyed bhakti, we may have to cross over such circumstances, whoever we may be. Karma Mishra Bhakta means you perform your service, but along with the service you're rendering, you also have certain attachments to enjoying the facilities you're getting from your service. Now what do you do if Krishna gives you facilities and you enjoy them? Are you supposed to just not enjoy them? It's like a facility is the beautiful deities. Are you supposed to not enjoy seeing the deities? Or Srila Prabhupada may build a beautiful temple in Vrindavan with a beautiful garden or Mayapur. Such wonderful facilities Prabhupada has given his devotees in Mayapur. We don't go there to enjoy, but how could we not enjoy seeing nice fountains and so many nice animals? How not to enjoy? Naturally, spontaneously, we enjoy. Srila Prabhupada wanted us to be happy. He wanted us to have nice facilities that we could be happy in Krishna conscious. But our purpose is not to enjoy them. Krishna sometimes likes to see his devotees happy. So our being happy is for Krishna's pleasure. That is the mood of the gopis. The gopis want nothing for themselves, but they enjoy more than Krishna because Krishna is so pleased by their unmotivated service, willing to go to hell forever just to give Krishna a moment of relief from a headache willing to abandon their children, some of them, their husbands, their mothers, their fathers, their homes, all of their possessions, everything, to run out to the forest to meet Krishna with no thought that they may never be allowed home again. They'll just be forest dwellers for the rest of their life. They were prepared to do that not for their own pleasure, but to satisfy Krishna. And Krishna reciprocates, seeing how much they want to please him by giving them more pleasure than he experiences. Now, how is that possible? Krishna is Rasaraj. He's the supreme enjoyer. He's the complete whole. His enjoyment is unlimited. How much can the Jivatma enjoy? We're just infinitesimal little parts of Krishna. Krishna's enjoyment is unlimited. Krishna's enjoyment is so great he can share it with the entire existence. But this is part of his achinta shakti, his inconceivable potencies. He can give the experience of greater enjoyment than he feels in his little part and parcel. That is the nature of love. So yes, the gopis are enjoying like anything, but they care nothing for that enjoyment. They're enjoying only for Krishna. They don't dress nicely because they have some vanity. Even when they're looking in the mirror, they're not thinking how beautiful I am. They're thinking, let Krishna see something very beautiful so that he is happy. Whatever they do is only for Krishna. Even when they pray to Krishna, asking for something that appears that they want, they're only doing it because they know 
that this will make Krishna pleased. That is undivided, unconditional devotional service. That is the goal of life. That is the only real subject of Srimad Bhagavatam. You are listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.